can you do um, just like uh, talk about the vision of like autonomy federation? Uh, you guys can go uh, both give your um, you know kind of like your um, your view on what's the vision of the organization, the politics you know around it. Well, you know, coming from the period myself um, where you know of the black movement as of the 1960s and the 1970s, you know, the black power movement, and seeing um, some of the flaws in relation to uh, autonomous nature of, of uh, I should say, uh, authoritarian nature of leadership and its struggles, um, led us to this point of trying to create an organization of ordinary people, you know, where ordinary people actually control uh, the movement itself, instead of, uh, you know, strong leaders or big leaders or whatever that can't be challenged and that can't be uh, removed, we wanted to have a movement that, uh, from the very beginning, was from the grassroots. Poor people control the movement and poor people were the movement. And we have always been successful with that, but when we started in Atlanta, uh, it was around, it, it was, um, I don't know, seven or eight students and uh, an equal number, somewhere there's about, of community people and, and, and organizers like myself. And uh, one of the first things we did was to create an organization, uh, create a movement around uh, the transit system. We, we started the second uh, transit riders movement in the country, in fact. Uh, in, in, in Atlanta, you know, this is around the time of uh, when the uh, city was getting ready for the Olympics and they wanted to jack the fare up uh, some by a dollar and something uh, so that the tourists and the uh, people in the suburbs would be financing the system effectively. Although people who had to ride the system every day would still be paying a ton of money, but they'd probably be financed out from even being able to use the system, use the, the transit system. And uh, so we had to fight that. We created a, a mass coalition of uh, poor and working class people, uh, not all black people, but you know, the major Atlanta's a majority black city. And uh, so we were able, but we created this, this movement. And uh, at that time, the person who was over the uh, MARTA board, the MARTA, uh, MARTA being the Metropolitan Metropolitan Atlanta Rapid Transit uh, Administration. The, he was the guy that was also over the Dr. Martin Luther King's old group, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And uh, we used that contradiction to attack, to attack the board and to attack the system. So, because you, you're claiming here's a guy uh, comes out of a movement that was in, res responsible for the poor people's movement, and he's here now working for the man, running the man's board is the man in fact so we we use that contradiction to attack the system and that kind of like has been our strategy over the years is, is to build a movement from the grassroots from poor people not from so-called leaders not from so-called uh, you know politicians uh, but build a movement in fact in opposition to those forces and and use that movement to to challenge the authorities but also to try to transform society you know transform how things function you know, instead of just having it, uh, having we went a few reforms, and we accept the system. We don't accept the system. We try to dismantle the system, and we're not always successful in doing that. You know, obviously, uh, but you know, as a small group a movement, uh, we're a, we've been able to make some inroads in struggles, and make uh, that that ordinarily wouldn't there would have been nothing there. You know, uh, my hometown, for instance, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, we uh, were able to come in there and challenge, challenge long years of police terrorism and uh, we were able to give a, actually an international uh, face to uh, what was going on for years, these crimes against black people there and poor people. Uh, we were able to call for an international uh, boycott, actually had activists coming from, uh, came in from uh, uh, England to stand with us when we were being tried for the Chattanooga 3 case, the, uh, you know, three activists, myself and two other activists in black autonomy were being prosecuted for having a demonstration in City Hall to protest the deaths of, uh, of two young black men by the, by the city police force. And so we've had this kind of activism in every city uh, that we, we've lived in or been a part of. You know, we've had this kind of activism going on uh, from the grassroots. We, certainly we're not a, a well-known group 
but um, we're the kind of radical tendency we think that in this period can grow because of the contradictions right now. Uh, poverty is at a level right now uh, greater than it ever has been any time in the past actually. Uh, we're at a stage right now where really poverty is more sustained in this period uh, or as sustained as it was during the so-called Great Depression. You know, at one stage of the Great Depression you had like 15 percent poverty at the most 25 and uh, in the black community we've had over 26 percent poverty consistently. Right now the city of uh, Memphis is over 26 percent, 27 percent poverty. And uh, this has been going for years and years and years on end, you know, in, in, in black and poor working class communities. And it's happening in other communities of color as well. And so we're just a pocket of a, a fraction of, a, of, a, of a, a movement right now that's beginning to raise its voice against the elite and against what the elite is doing in a southern city. But, you know, it can be happening in any city. But we're doing it in a southern city that uh, has had long years of uh, 